Welcome to the final days. Today is March 26, 2019. Today we will be viewing three celestial orbs at one time. A gigantic machine being towed through space, purple lines shooting down from the sky, a total solar eclipse, and more sky anomalies never mentioned by mainstream media. The purpose of this channel is to show the viewers that we are living in the very last days according to the Holy Bible and to explain why this is good news and cause for celebration, explained later in this video. The images we are viewing were obtained over the past few days from the Federal Aviation Weather Cameras in Alaska. Each image is 10 minutes apart from the next, forming a time-lapse video when strung together. The southwest facing weather camera in Kasagluk, Alaska shows three different orbs at one time. At first we don't see much, but some contrast brings out two of the three orbs in this image. Accompanying the most prominent orb is the craft that we always see flying between the viewer's perspective and the celestial orb. I'll go through most of this footage exactly as it came off the camera. Then later, it will be shown with some contrast added to enable the viewing of all three celestial orbs. Again, we see these vertical purple lines from many different cameras. They always come in pairs, with the first purple vertical line being much darker and more pronounced than the second vertical line. Here's the second vertical line, fainter than the first, but still visible. Many cameras show these purple vertical lines. Notice the cloud in front of the celestial object. This is one of the many reasons we know this can't be a lens flare. Clouds can never be in front of a camera-produced lens flare. Another reason we know this cannot be a lens flare is because this object is rotating much faster than our sun, which only rotates once every 27 Earth days. Here are the same images we just viewed, but with contrast applied in order to see the detail of the celestial objects better. When applying contrast to an image, it's important to avoid getting clouds, sun glare, or other bright objects within the area of the contrast. That's why you'll see in some of these contrast images where I've excluded clouds from the contrast area, it looks a little bit blotchy. These contrast images show the three orbs. Look closely and you can see all three. Something else these contrast images do show is a piece of equipment hanging down from above. This equipment is massive and always seen just below NASA's circular glare that was launched into place between the Earth and the Sun, much closer to the Earth of course. Many of my previous videos show and explain the equipment that produces the circular glare, so I won't take time to explain it here. Remember this equipment because we will be seeing more of it in just a minute. These are all signs that we are living in the very last days. Jesus is describing the last days in Luke chapter 21 verse 25 when he says that we will see signs in the sky indicating the very last days, the end of the age. The small oblong shaped item that we see dangling down from the top of the screen is only the bottom portion of a gigantic mushroom shaped object that floats beneath NASA's circular glare. We'll be seeing this in detail in just a minute. This equipment is only visible when directly underneath NASA's circular glare, which illuminates it enough for the cameras to pick it up. Because it is only visible in close proximity to NASA's circular glare, this leads us to believe that it's visible within the infrared color spectrum only, and thus not normally visible to the naked eye. I drew circles around the three orbs for anyone who may not have good enough screen contrast for viewing these objects. They are faint, but if you have adequate screen contrast, you will be able to see all three objects.
These close-ups with contrast help to see that the most visible of the three celestial orbs has a very fast rotation. The craters and markings on it really help to identify the fact that it is rotating quickly. Our April 15th video showed this footage from the west-facing camera in Arctic Village. This looks like a cloaked mushroom-shaped equipment that is only visible directly underneath NASA's circular glare. I've added contrast and also traced around this object to give viewers a general idea of its shape. The craft in the front seemed to be towing the equipment around as if it were a tugboat pulling a gigantic balloon through space. This is obviously part of the equipment in place to hide this planetary system. This enormous contraption seems to be acting like a gigantic umbrella to shade the celestial objects from NASA's light, preventing them from becoming illuminated and thus even more visible. The craft may also steer NASA's circular glare around these celestial objects to avoid impact. These are more of the signs and wonders of the last days. The south-facing camera in Shagaluk, Alaska shows a huge lens in the sky. We've been seeing these geostationary lenses for a few years now and from many different cameras. People also see these with the naked eye as well. There are hundreds of these nearly invisible lenses installed throughout the skies in order to bend light and remove focus to hide the inbound planetary system, which will make its closest pass to Earth during the seven-year, biblically foretold Great Tribulation, which will be starting very soon. The east-facing camera located in Tuluksak, Alaska, demonstrates how effective the atmospheric chemicals are at hiding enormous celestial objects from the public's view. Here, we see a heavily cratered, rotating orb rising up in the morning. We know this can't be a lens flare of the sun because it's rotating quickly, and it's highly textured. Additionally, it's hidden behind the clouds part of the time. A camera-produced lens flare can never become hidden behind clouds in a photo. The west-facing camera in Ijigig, Alaska shows some very strange shapes here, possibly something round, but it's difficult to tell for sure. But as NASA's circular glare passes in front of this object, our real sun passes behind, concealing the eclipse. Perhaps the most interesting thing about this footage is the fact that NASA's circular glare pulsates as it passes over this celestial object almost as if the celestial object is somehow affecting the functionality of NASA's manufactured light. These are more signs of the last days. In just a minute we will observe a complete solar eclipse with all of its equipment in full flare. Approaching the last days is cause for celebration with faithful followers of Jesus Christ because he is removing from earth those believers who are living in holiness. This is commonly called the rapture, which will take place quickly and quietly just before the dawn of the Great Tribulation. The New King James Version of Luke chapter 21 verse 36 reads, Watch therefore and pray always that you may be counted worthy to escape all these things that will come to pass. Jesus is referring to the Great Tribulation. He is saying that those who are counted worthy will escape all God's wrath. To be counted worthy, we must be living in holiness. A link in the description box below discusses what holiness is and how to achieve it. The sun is beginning to get lower as viewed from the west-facing camera in Chilkat, Alaska.
We see two celestial objects. The one in the upper left corner is being passed over by NASA's manufactured light with the real sun passing behind it. The next thing we observe here is a complete total solar eclipse. The manufactured circular glare always stays in front of the celestial object while the real sun passes behind it, concealing the eclipse from view. All of the odd-shaped items in this footage are reflections of the equipment used to conceal these daily eclipses. These close-ups of the footage we just saw provide an idea of how enormous this fast-rotating, cratered sphere is when compared to the landscape in the photo below it. As mentioned in several previous videos, if we draw a straight line from the equipment's pink reflection to the center of the artificial light, the black dot, the eclipsing object always falls upon that line without exception. Ignore the smudge in the middle of the image. It's been there for a very long time. This is the east-facing camera in Attawapiskat, Ontario in Canada. Focus your attention to the upper right corner of these images. There is a man-made object in the path of NASA's light as it crosses the screen in perfect synchronization with the Sun. The sun is currently behind a dark nebula. To see more on the nebula, watch my March 29 video. I don't have a clue as to what this object is, but it definitely appears manufactured. Here are some close-ups to help see it a little better. In these last two frames, I placed a black circle over the circular glare so that the contrast would work better in hopes to see more details on this object. Once again, we see how effective the atmospheric chemicals are at hiding enormous celestial objects from the public's view. From the east-facing weather cam in Ninapichuk, Alaska, we see a heavily cratered rotating orb rising up in the morning. We know this can't be a lens flare because it's hidden behind the clouds part of the time. Please help others find this video in searches by clicking on the thumbs up. Thank you very much for doing that. In Haines, Alaska, the southwest facing camera captured those purple vertical lines we often see on lots of these weather cameras. These next few frames will tell you how to accept Christ into your life in the event you are seeking Him. Simply pause the screen if you need more time to read the text. Thanks everyone for watching.